This election is very much about domestic issues like abortion or inflation. Foreign policy is just a footnote. So why should the world care about the result? Why should you care about it? Because the fallout could be global. Kamala Harris and Donald Trump represent two very different ideologies. Trump is an isolationist. He believes in using trade as a weapon. He's also not a fan of alliances, especially NATO. Harris, on the other hand, is less vocal on such issues. Her foreign policy is seen as Biden 2.0. If she wins, she'll be forced to handle two full-blown wars. Does she have the experience to do that? We'll have to wait and watch. But beyond the candidates, there are other reasons too. The U.S. is the largest economy in the world. It is also the second largest trading country. America trades with more than 200 nations and regions. It makes up 9% of global trades. If the next president is protectionist, every country will feel the pinch. Same with climate change. The U.S. is the second biggest emitter of greenhouse gases, but Trump doesn't believe in climate change. Last time he was president, he pulled his country out of the Paris Climate Agreement. If he wins again, will he repeat that? Will he roll back America's climate commitments? These are questions that will affect the entire world. But tonight, we are only looking at the strategic fallout of the election result. What do other countries want? Who are they backing to win? Who, who do they want to win? Let's start with India. New Delhi does not need to pick a side. That's how stable ties are. There is bipartisan support for a long-term partnership with India. With Donald Trump, Prime Minister Modi has great chemistry. With Harris, he can hope for continuity. Like I said, she is Biden 2.0, or expected to be, and Biden did a lot for India-US relations. So either way, India is fine, but most other countries do have a definite pick. Western Europe and NATO will be hoping for a Harris win. You may remember what happened at the 2019 NATO summit in London. Western leaders got together to mock Trump. Their comments were caught on a hot mic. Again, the issue was ideology. Trump doesn't see the logic in defending countries on another continent. America first is his mantra, which is why Ukraine will also be wary of Trump. President Zelensky did meet him during his trip to New York, but that is unlikely to have moved Trump. He says he will end the war on day one in the White House. He hasn't said how, though. But chances are he will cut military aid to Ukraine, basically force Kiev to sue for peace. Now we come to West Asia. Israel has a very clear pick in this race. Trump and Benjamin Netanyahu have a great friendship. Trump moved the U.S. Embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. He also brokered the Abraham Accords between Israel and some Arab countries. So Netanyahu would like to have Trump back in the White House. If Biden was running, he, it may have been a bit different. Despite some tough words, Biden has basically given him endless support. He also keeps saying that he's a Zionist. But Kamala Harris is likely to be tougher on Israel. She may not say it during rallies, but by all indications, she'll put more pressure on the Israeli Prime Minister. And what about the Gulf states? Well, Saudi Arabia will be happy to see Biden out. Remember, Biden promised to turn Riyadh into a pariah. On his watch, the relationship broke down completely at one point. In comparison, Trump was a lot more friendly. He was president when the Khashoggi murder happened. Most Western countries isolated Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, but Donald Trump did not. Reports say he even bragged about saving MBS from isolation. So chances are Riyadh would like to see him back. So would North Korea. Kim Jong-un had three meetings with Donald Trump. Yes, none of them led to anything, but at least Kim was on the world stage. Harris, though, is expected to continue Biden's policy. Closer ties with South Korea and no talks with the North. But here's a fun fact. Kim's biggest ally wants the opposite. I'm talking about China. Donald Trump waged a trade war against China when he was president. He's promising a second round this time. More than 60% tariff on all Chinese imports. And this would be devastating. Chinese imports are worth more than $560 billion. Imagine a 60% tariff on all of that. China cannot afford it, especially in the current state of their economy. Having said that, Trump may not be eager to protect Taiwan. He doesn't want to defend NATO, so why would he help Taiwan? And Beijing knows this. They recently said that the U.S. could discard Taiwan if Trump wins the election. So it's a question of priorities for China. Trade or Taiwan, what do they want more? Of course, all of this is based on two assumptions. One, that Trump 2.0 will be Trump 1.0. If you listen to his rallies, that seems to be the case, but you can never be sure.
The second assumption is that Kamala Harris will be Biden 2.0. Again, we can't be sure. Maybe Harris will come into her own as president. Maybe she will chart her own path. And if she does, these positions could change. Safe to say, it's a big week in geopolitics. All the global capitals will be watching Washington closely. Washington is all set for a presidential battle like no other. In less than 90 days, it's either going to be him or me sitting in the Oval Office. Kamala Harris versus Donald Trump. All we want is one simple thing. Get out on Tuesday. A vice president versus a former president. As we head towards election night, Vantage will be live from the heart of the action. Speaking to voters in this final stretch. I'm still very undecided. Very close presidential race. Tracking the campaigns as they make the last push. From exclusive ground reports to in-depth analysis, this is your one-stop destination for the presidential race. Join us on this special edition of Vantage, live from the White House in Washington, D.C.